Então, o compêndio da Lexia Divina é uma forma simples, prática e acessível de ter na tua mão o resumo de toda a oração de um ano litúrgico. Com esse livro, você não vai perder a tua oração. Você vai registrar dia após dia o conteúdo da tua oração. E a oração vai se transformar em vida, vai se transformar em decisões, em práticas concretas. Essa palavra é tão poderosa que um só versículo pode mudar toda a sua vida. E o que é Alexio Divina? Alexio Divina, como o nome diz, é uma leitura orante da Palavra de Deus. Cinco passos, muito simples, e a leitura é algo objetivo. O que é que esses textos falam hoje, concretamente? Lê com calma, lê tranquilamente, lê várias vezes essas três leituras. Depois da leitura você tem a meditação. Então a meditação é um movimento de entrar dentro de nós, onde Deus habita no mais profundo de nós, e escutar o que é que Deus quer me falar a mim, naquilo que eu vivo hoje, com essa palavra. A graça da oração. Se Deus me fala, eu respondo. Uma pessoa que ama, responde à pessoa amada. E o quarto passo, a contemplação, que transpassa o teu coração e, e torna o teu dia todo diferente. E essa palavra deve ficar ruminando no nosso coração ao longo de todo o dia. E último passo, a resolução. Qual a decisão que eu tomo face a essa palavra? Na escuta do verbo. Hello everyone, happy Sunday! I'm Cecilia Mary Elizabeth from Seas of the World Community and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us in this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, today July 4th. And for the readings of this Sunday, we will read Ezekiel chapter 2 verses 3 to 5, Responsorial Psalm is Psalm 123, 1, 2, 3, Second reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 7 to 10, and the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 to 16. Our reading from the prophet Ezekiel. A spirit entered into me and sat, and sat me on my feet, and I heard one speaking to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are imprudent and stubborn. I'm sending you to them and you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. They shall know that There has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second chapter of prophet Ezekiel. A spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. Prophet Ezekiel is telling us that the Holy Spirit came to him. And here we are talking about the Old Testament. So remember, this idea of Holy Spirit, of the Spirit of God, was something unknown. We heard in the Psalms, um, Lord, may your spirit never leave me. And even in the books of, the King, of Kings and Chronicles, we hear this spirit of the Lord. Genesis, the spirit of the Lord was in the face of the earth. So yes, there is this idea of the spirit of God, but no one was quite sure what this was. Only with Jesus, you were clear what the Holy Spirit is. But here it says, a spirit entering to me and set me on my feet. When the Holy Spirit comes to us, he sets us on our feet, standing, standing. There is a saint in the church that I don't remember his name now, says that the glory of God is man fully alive, is man standing. Glory of God is man standing up upright for what because this is life this is what he gave his life for is to be standing and praising and honoring him so the beginning of the ministry of ezekiel's 
of Ezekiel's prophecy, of Ezekiel's ministry as a prophet, God put him standing, sat him on his feet. And he heard a voice saying, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a nation of rebels, saying, Well, I am setting you on your feet and sending you to a people that will not listen to you. They are rebels. But you still, you have to proclaim my word. And they will know that there is a prophet in Israel, a prophet among them. When the Lord gives us his Holy Spirit and sets us on our feet, is to show others that God has power to act, even in the weakest instrument. It's not to say that we are better than anyone, but to say, like, look at me, see what God can, could do to me, what God can do. Why can't he do the same with you? That's our mission of prophets now, is to show that God has mercy. God had mercy in each one of us. So why can't he have mercy in someone else's life? So we are all constituted prophets for our own people, for our house, for people that we love and that is around us. Responsorial Psalm today says, to you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens, as the eyes of the servant look to the hand of their master, as the eye of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we, ha for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than if fits to the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. Our eyes need to be fixed in the Lord. We need to have our eyes in the Lord our God. Let's not look in our weaknesses, on our sins and things that we know that we are weak and that we don't succeed. Let's turn, turn our eyes to the Lord and look at Him. And say, Lord, here I am. Here I am with my weaknesses. Here I am with everything that is fragile in me, that is weak in me, that I fall short. But I'm here, Lord. Second reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 10. Considering the external character of the revelations to keep me from being too late, a thorn was given me in the flesh a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elate. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast, and, and the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am contempt with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. We should have this verse in our hearts. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. For whenever I am weak, I am strong. Whenever we face our weaknesses, we should say, I am strong. Why? Because I'm proud of myself? No, because God is within me. That's why our eyes need to be fixed in the Lord. Our eyes need to be raised up to the Lord. Because I don't... I, I know that my, my strength comes from the Lord. For myself, I'm only misery and weakness. Many saints said that. When we read the diaries of the saints and we see their lives and their quotes, what they said, many, many, many of them said that by themselves they are nothing. By themselves they are just misery and weaknesses. But by the grace and power of God, 
they were strong and they were able to accomplish everything that we now know and that we look at them and say, look how strong St. Francis de Sale was, how Francis of Assisi was, how St. Therese, how St. Teresa, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, wow, how could she? Well, because their eyes were, were fixed in the Lord. They weren't looking at themselves. They knew that at themselves they were nothing. But they believed God. They believed that God was the God of their strength. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Let us repeat that. When we feel our weaknesses, when people point out our weaknesses, how many times is hard for us to hear when people say, you are like this, you are like that. Not in the pointing of the finger, but sometimes they point, out, point that out to us for us to convert, for us to reconsider the way that we are doing things. So even if it is hard, place yourself before the Lord saying, Lord, when I am weak is, is then when I'm strong. I am strong in you. The gospel for this Sunday is Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 6. Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this come? Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? It is not the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James, and, jo and Joseph and Jonas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And Jesus could not, could not do, Jesus could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. The gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. May he not be amazed by our unbelief. Far from us, for the Lord be amazed by our unbelief. Yesterday, July 3rd, we celebrated St. Thomas' feast day. A feast of believers. Believers that first uh, may doubt and first saying, what's happening? What is this? I quite don't get it. But by an act of faith, believe and go into India, Spain, and whatever the Lord sends us. But these people here, people from Jesus' hometown, they took offense at him. We're just like, who is this guy, this kid that we saw growing up? Is this kid trying to teach us what to do or talking about God? Where did he learn that? But they weren't curious to know where Jesus learned that, but it took offense at him. Let us not be scandalized or amazed when people take offense at us. People from our own family saying, I know you. I know your past. I know what you have done. I know who you are. And you can say, yes, you do know who I am. So don't take offense, but be amazed how God can work in a broken vessel. You can say that, saying, yeah, you know how, how I messed up many times, how I was unfaithful, how I doubted, how this and this and that. But look what miracles and marvelous things the Lord can do. So if he could do this to me, imagine to you. Let's challenge people in a good way. Let's not take offense at them or not receive when they take offense at us. And let us bring them faith or at least questions. Sometimes we are only channels of questions. People that will question things say, but I knew you. I know how you were like this and like this and like that. 
let's be prophet and this is to be a prophet and jesus says a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown maybe people in our families friends people very close to us won't get it how we converted how we changed our ways but still we are called to be prophets jesus did not hide that he was a son of god because people did not believe him he continued his ways his way and said he went to the other villages teaching he wasn't um sad or not motivated to keep going his mission he just said oh well i pray for you oh well if you don't believe me may god who help you to believe later in life let's just be prophets let's be prophets apostles disciples whatever we are and show people that whenever we feel weak in, in all of our weaknesses we are strong in christ and if we have changed our ways of of thinking of living of doing things is because of christ it's not because of ourselves but because christ is our strength amen